Good evening to the people of God. We greet you tonight with the joy of the Lord because we know that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And I'm so happy to be able to come another night, another time, and uh, share the word of God with you. We praise God. God has blessed us. God has kept us through another day, kept us through the beginning of another week, and we give God glory for that. As people are coming on, oh, God bless you, Deacon Sonia, God bless you. As people are coming on, uh, we want to make sure that everybody is able to um, come in and come on. And uh, I just wanna uh, really, apologize. Good evening. Good evening, Brother Joseph. God bless you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, our Florida member, Linda. Glory for his glory. I see you, Sister Gregory. Uh, I just want to say uh, last week that I, um, I thought of a bright idea about 6.30 and uh, I apologize. Good evening, Sister Beth, for people who could not uh, find it but uh, I was trying to address one problem and I created another problem. And so uh, I won't do that anymore. Uh, I think that my anxieties got the, be got the best of me about, uh, God bless you to the Hughley family, my anxieties got the best of me because people were saying that they were getting knocked off and it was freezing a lot. And, um, and so I tried to do a last minute fix and so I do apologize. All right, we're going to get into the Word of God. We're going to get into, thank you, thank you. God bless you, Sister Gregory. We're going to get into uh, uh, the scripture tonight. is taken from Psalm 91, and um, uh, I, I've been meditating on that really since uh, last week, probably Wednesday or Thursday. <clears throat> and um, those of you that received the handout, you know that that's what the handout, the passage that we're using. And so um, it is, uh, as I stated in the handout, I will just state for clarification purposes, uh, but it's not essential to salvation, amen, that uh, the scholars are divided as to who actually authored Psalm 91. Some say Moses, Others say David. And it's so funny because every time, practically, I think of the psalm, I think of David. But uh, it jarred my memory that David is not the only author of the psalm. There are others. Not a lot more, but there are others. So um, uh, just, just tuck that away. But uh, it doesn't take away from the, I think, from the powerfulness of the passage and and the the uh, distinctness of the passage, whoever is the author, we know it was inspired by God. Amen. And so I'm going to read it to you right now from the King James Version, and it says, "He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty." I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him I or will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. He, his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. 
There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. And that's Psalm 91, verses 1 through 12. And as I was uh, meditating on this psalm and looking up the different words in the original, I was thinking about and I, I really pondered uh, this. Good evening. I see you. Good evening, Sister Rice. God bless you. Uh, uh, I really pondered the information that you and I tell ourselves, what we feed our mind. What is it that we rehearse over and over and over again in our mind? Uh, are we really putting positiveness in, therefore we get positiveness out? Are we thinking on things that are lovely, things that are pure, things that are of good report, things that are just? Are we thinking on those things? Or are we, on the other hand, are we um, uh, entertaining negativity? And I know that, that there's a lot going on. This year, People, there's been a lot that has happened. Uh, last year and this year has been quite concentrated. I understand that. I understand that we're in a worldwide pandemic and we don't have any idea when this is really going to be over. Booster shots and all, we don't know. We Even the scientists don't know. They can't really say. They can't give us a date when this is going to be over. And so I understand that people are still dying from the pandemic and uh, first responders and hospital workers and nurses and doctors, again, are fatigued and worn out and burned out. I understand that. I understand all of that. But you and I have a duty to ourselves and a responsibility to feed our mind with things that are positive because positive thoughts, uh, I taught this a few, few weeks ago, positive thoughts uh, equal positive speech equal positive actions. The same is true with negative thoughts. And so if you allow the negativity to fester, if you continue to mull it over in your head, that's one reason why um, I, I have to, um, uh, if I get angry, I, I've got to, I've got, I can't, I can't hold it too long because I can't have that negativity uh, uh, in my head. I have to let things go. And uh, believe me, it was a process for me. But you and I have a duty and a responsibility to put in the things that are positive, the things that are going to uplift us, and the things that are going to steady us in this Christian walk. And that, my friends, that, my brothers and sisters, is the Word of God. That's one reason why this whole uh, Bible study is called A Scripture a Day Helps Keep Depression at Bay because at least one scripture, you have time in your schedule to read and to meditate on at least one scripture every day because at the end of the year, that, that one scripture has turned into, th good evening, God bless you, I'm happy to see you too. Uh, that one scripture has turned into 365 scriptures. That one scripture in a year. And so if we don't do anything else for our, for our psyche to upbuild us, we need to make sure that every day at least one scripture they, they will send you in your email one Bible verse every day, every day, just one. So you don't have to worry about reading a whole long passage and, and, and chapter after chapter. But when we put negativity and continue to dwell on negativity, it's like putting bad gas in your car. Now, I was around, I'm old enough for the time 
uh, when if you didn't put the right gas in your car, when you turn the car off, I know some of you all will remember this, when you turn the car off, the car would do what my grandfather and my daddy called knocking. It would make all this noise and it would shake from side to side and that was an indicator that you did not put the proper gas. This was before unleaded. All right, that you did not put the proper gas for your type of car. Now, my car requires, according to the manual, requires uh, 92 or up, 92 or 93. Well, there's no 92 around here. <laughs> so we put in 90. In fact, uh, uh, both of our cars require 93. All right, if we see a gas station that has 92, we will put it in there. But the point is, we can't take 87. All right, we can't take 89. I don't know what it would do to the engine, but the manufacturer, the book tells you that you must put in premium gas and tells you the octane. All right, well, the word of God is the premium gas. Are you all following me? And we must put it into ourselves, our mind, on a daily, on a regular basis. There is a Bible, for those of you who are interested, uh, in, uh, that you read the Bible through in one year. But it's a lot of reading. It's four and five passages. So if you don't have a lot of time, that might not be the route that you want to go. Uh, it's like putting negativity and harboring and focusing in on it. It's like putting bad food in your body. Now, many of us like uh, sweets and, and junk food and and fast food and all of that, but there's only so much of that your body can take. I wish you all would pray with me. I really do. There's only so much of that. And at a point, your body is going to signal you're going to begin to get sick. You're going to have this general malaise feeling. If you might throw up. It's no telling. Your lab work could be all out of kilter. Your body is going to signal if you put too much bad food in it. All right? Well, your spirit man also signals when we put negativity in it and not the word of God to offset the negativity. If we don't feed our mind on the word of God, and we allow all of this other information to filter in and out of our minds, we will find ourselves in a slump. I know what I'm talking about. We will find ourselves in a situation. We will find ourselves ultimately feeling melancholy, feeling down, feeling depressed. Amen. And so when we read passages such as Psalm 91, when we meditate on, and I'm not going to get to all 12 verses tonight, I, I, I know that. But when we meditate on, uh, excuse me, Psalm 91 and, 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 and really start bragging about God and who God is. Some people, sometimes on social media, they'll put some things, put a post that says, um, that says uh, let's gossip about God. And somebody says, well, I heard he was a way maker. And, you know, and we say, you know, when, when you start bragging on God, I'm going to tell you it lifts your spirit. Spirit. It lifts your mindset. It helps you to understand that God is awesome. He is the awesome God. He's not one of the awesome gods. He is the awesome God. That God is faithful. That God won't, does not fail. There's no failure found in him. 
when you start bragging on him and reminding yourself, I don't want to get ahead of myself. And so bragging on God, here's my points. I know you're waiting for them. Number one, helps us to recall his goodness. Listen, people of God, when you bombard your, your mind with negativity, you can easily forget about the goodness of God. Doesn't take that long. Doesn't take that much negativity to crowd out. But when you start saying that I know, I know beyond the shadow of a doubt that the Lord is my shepherd. Thank you, Jesus. I shall not want. When you start bragging on God, he makes me lie down in green pastures. When you start saying what the word says about God, uh, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemy and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, what did they do? They stumbled and fell. When you start bragging on God, when you start, you will be able to recall the goodness of God, the faithfulness of God. You'll be able to recall what God has done in your life personally and in the lives of the saints that you know of. You'll be able to recall what he did in Bible days and Bible times and, and, and understand that he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. You'll be able to recall his goodness and think on his goodness when you start bragging on him. You can start with Psalm 91. Mm -hmm. you, you, you can say things from the model prayer, from the Lord's prayer. Lord, I thank you that goodness and mercy is following me all the days of my life. I thank you that I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You, you, you can start thinking about the word of God and thinking about hold everyone that thirsteth and he who has no money come ye by and eat I thank you that you are the fountain that never runs dry it, it, it don't have to be no real deep scripture I didn't say that grammatically correct but you got the gist of what I'm saying it doesn't have to be such a big deal such a big theology the, the, theological point no and then, and then, guess what? Once you start bragging on him from the word of God, you start being able to recall what he's done in your life. How he's never let you down. How when you just knew you were in the tightest spot ever, how he came through in the nick of time. It might have been 11.59 and some seconds, but he came through. Oh, yeah. You'll be able to recall the goodness of God. That's point number one. Let me hurry on. Point number two, bragging on God helps us to remember scripture. You see, because, because here's the thing. We don't just read the scripture. You know, Timothy says, study to show thyself approved. We tell people to read the Bible, but, but the word of God actually says study. But, but you don't just read it. You meditate on it. You think about it. That helps to seal it in your, in your mind. That helps to seal it. Helps you to be able to pull it up when you need it. Oh, yes, it does. The reason you and I can read is why. Why can we read? It's really only one reason. It's because somewhere when we were four, five, or six, or all three, we went over the alphabet day in and day out. The alphabet is the foundation for being able to read. I'm not a school teacher, but I can tell you that. If you don't know the alphabet, you won't be able to read because it's the foundation. Okay, hold that thought. 
bragging on God helps us to remember. It's the foundation for us to be able to remember scripture. And no, you may not remember where it is all the time. You might can say the book. You might not be able to say the chapter and verse. Or maybe you can. Some people can rattle off chapter and verse. I can tell you the book sometimes. Sometimes I can't. But I can tell you that it's in there. I can tell you for the most part if it's the Old Testament or the New Testament. Because it's foundational for being able to remember. That's what bragging on God does. God, you never failed. You have never failed. You can't lie. Men and women lie, but you can't lie. It's impossible for you to lie. That's what the word says. And I wanna thank you. I'm just saying, one little part of a scripture and I'm not uh, uh, purporting or, or promoting taking scripture out of context. No, I'm saying if you can remember a portion of scripture and, 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 and brag on God, God, you're so holy. You, there's no sin found in you. You're righteous. You're... Are you all following me? It's foundational for you to be able to recall. It, 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 it helps us to remember what the word of God says about the Lord. And lastly, and I'm going to let you go. I know you're tired. I know you work today. Bragging on God or on God's word, repeating it back to him, Bragging on God's word resonates within us. You get to get something out of it. Because you and I know we cannot add to God. God is self-sufficient. He's all-sufficient. We, we can't add to God. But when we brag on him, it resonates within us. Uh, uh, it does something about it's quickening with our spirit. Our spirit bears witness with the word of God. Our spirit uh, immediately receives and accepts the word of God when we, when we brag on him. Our spirit can identify, if you will, with the word of God. It resonates within us and it lifts up the bowed down head. And then we think of the scripture, why are thou dis? quieted within me. Hope thou in God. Why is your head down? Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory, the Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. It resonates on the inside of us. It helps us to straighten up a slumped over shoulder and a bowed down head. It helps us to hold our head erect knowing that I need to look to the hills from whence cometh my help because all of my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Woo, Lord have mercy. I'm not supposed to be preaching, but this is blessing me. Now resonate, resonate. I looked up the word resonate resonate in the in the in the yes ma'am in the regular dictionary uh uh app all right dictionary.com i have the app on my devices all right resonate definition number 4 i like it to amplify vocal sound by the sympathetic vibration of air in certain cavities and bony structures. I'll give it to you again. To amplify vocal sound by the sympathetic vibration of air in certain cavities and bony structures. That's cool. That's nice. Okay. But this was, this, this was the one that sealed the deal for me. This is definition number five on dictionary.com to produce a positive feeling, emotional response, or opinion. 
resonate, to produce a positive feeling. See, I know, I know I'm on to something here. A positive emotional response or a positive opinion. And that's what we want to do by, by uh, uh, bragging on God's word. We want it to resonate in us and produce a positive emotional experience. And I know, I know, I know there have been those that have criticized and downplayed uh, emotion in the church. I understand that. And uh, in some context or another, in a way, I can appreciate some of it. And I want to make that very clear, some of it. Because my issue with them downplaying emotionalism uh, uh, all together is that God made us emotional creatures. Okay. It's he that made us, not we ourselves. He made us emotional creatures. And while I understand we have to hear the word of God, we have to digest it, we have to, we have to uh, uh, meditate uh, on the word of God, I understand that. Because yes, it is true that some people who receive the word of God with, so, with strictly emotion, they tend to drop off when the hard times come. But let me tell you one thing. When you brag on God and you let that word rest, resonate within you when the hard times come, when the rain starts to fall, when trouble comes, when all hell is breaking loose, you begin to think on the goodness of Jesus even though you're going through a hellish difficult time, even though you haven't seen a time like this before in your life, but you begin to think on how God has blessed you despite what you're going through, you begin to, I'm telling you what I know, and you believe that you can hold on until you get to the other side. You believe that God's going to help you through it. Even if he doesn't take you out of it, he's going to help you in it to get through it. Why? Because his grace is sufficient. His mercy endures to all generations. And so, yes, sometimes you got to get emotional. Yes, you got to have a positive emotional experience when you're bragging on God. Sometimes I tell you, I, 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 I think about what God has done for me. I think about about what he is doing. I think about the fact that I'm still here, not any goodness of my own, not any merited uh, uh, thing that I've done. None of my degrees or education has me here. It is simply, it is solely, it is wholly by the goodness, by the mercy of God that I'm still here because I could have been dead. And some people would say I should have been dead, but I'm still here. And let me tell you one thing. I give God glory and praise. So yes, I'm going to get emotional. I'm going to just tell you right now. And when we get in our church, you ain't seen nothing yet. Ain't no telling what kind of emotion I show because God has blessed me. I could have died on the operating table twice last March. I could have died, but God's goodness and God's mercy, it resonates within me that God kept me here. He let my days, as the old deacon in the Baptist church would say, he let my days roll on just a little while longer. And I'm thankful. So yeah, I'm going to get emotional. Yeah, I might get loud. Yeah, you might not want to sit beside me. I might get on your nerves. My hand will go up. My hands will go up. My mouth will open. I'll stand up. I might not stand up as fast as I used to stand up before this lumbar fusion, but I'll get up. I may, t may take me a few more seconds, but I'll stand up. I'll wave my hand when I'm hearing the word of God and my spirit is bearing witness with the word of God when the man or woman is preaching the word of God oh yeah I'm gonna show some emotion I'm gonna tell you that right now I'm gonna show some emotion and I'm not ashamed to show it I don't care who's looking I don't care who's on the live stream I, I feel like running right now but you all wouldn't be able to see me I, <laughs> if I start running you won't be able to see me or a slow walk 
I should say, with this broken ankle. But let me tell you something. Yeah, the word of God resonates within me. Yes, it does. It, it, it produces something. It helps me to fight on a little while longer. It helps me to know that there is a bright side somewhere. It helps me to know that the storm is passing over. Hallelujah. It helps me to understand that God is still on the throne and I can call him anytime I need him. I can cry out to him and he will hear and answer. Yeah, it will resonate. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. So, so if you don't like emotion, uh, B top may not be the place for you because we've been through the storm and rain, but we still made it. Oh, glory. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Had some hard pains, but we still, hallelujah, glory to God. And so, and so the, the, the word of God ought to resonate on the inside. It ought to perk you up. It's like water to a dry plant. It ought to perk you up where you were leaned over and wilted feeling and feeling like you couldn't make it. It, that, that word that waters you perks you up and helps you to know I can make it. Not only can I make it, I will make it. I know I'm going to make it. Why? Because I made it through that and I made it through that. And you can identify by name the storms. I know that we name the hurricanes and the tornadoes here in the United States and in the Gulf of Mexico. But you can name your storm and you made it through your storm. Whatever name you've given it, you made it through your storm. And that's how come. Whew. It's resonating that you're going to make it through this one. Can't see your way through. Can't see your way clear. Start bragging on God. This is not the first mess you've been in. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. This is not the first time something off-putting has happened. Start bragging on God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. because we go from faith to faith what's the rest of it somebody type it and from what glory to glory that's the word of God that is we all have a journey Lord I didn't get to hardly I didn't get to hardly none of this, this, the text that's right that's right bragging on God. I didn't get to hardly none of the texts. You all will forgive me. But I did. I did. I most certainly did read Psalm 91 verses 1 through 12. That's what the author is doing. He's talking about God. He's a shelter. He, he, he makes sure that he covers you and I. It would be so much worse if the devil could get to us as he wanted and have his way with us. No, God's got you covered. Somebody type it. Somebody say it. God's got me covered. He is my fortress. He's my stronghold. I run in. Oh, yeah, I run in. I'm safe. I'm at safety. Yeah, I am. Whew. I bless the name of Jesus. I bless the name of the Lord. You've got to. Oh, yes, he does. God's got you covered. God's got you covered. God's got you covered. And I don't care who all is talking. I don't know who, who this is for. It's for somebody. People are talking and talking about what can't be done. Let me tell you something. God has the final say. God has the final say. In the life of the believer, God has the final say. Don't just accept these men and women saying all manner of things. 
God has the final say. God can turn a no to yes. Mm -hmm. Sure can. And he does. He does when he gets good and ready. And so I challenge you. I it actually I implore you. Begin. Begin bragging on God. The psalm is a great place to start. It's a great place to start. Oh yes, God's got you covered. Because he's our shelter. When we put our trust in him, he does not disappoint us. Even if it doesn't work out the way we prayed, it works out. Can somebody give God glory for that? It works out. Even if it don't work out the way you prayed, the way you planned, the way you thought, it still works out. God has you covered. And so, as we're, God bless you, uh, Sister Brenda. Yes, he is. It's not the first rodeo. That's right. I got so excited and into the lesson uh, I forgot to acknowledge people, but if I didn't acknowledge you tonight, please forgive me. I see you, cousin, cousin Gay. Uh, please forgive me. I, 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 this, this blessed me, and I hope it was a blessing to you. I really don't lose sight on the need and on the importance. God bless you, Cynthia. Uh, don't lose sight on the need to and the importance to brag on God. I'm telling you, it works, people of God. Let that word fill your mouth. Let that word fill your mouth. And you, you hear yourself saying it out loud. Out loud. I'm a part of the blessed man, according to Psalm 1. Blessed is the man. Who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, that's me, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight, my delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the, I'm telling you, planted by the rivers of water. That's the, that's the blessed man. Our pastor some years ago, and I'm closing, preached a whole revival on that one passage, Psalm 1, the blessed man. That's who we are, people of God. That's who we are. We're like trees planted by the rivers of water. Our roots go deep. And when the hurricanes come, and when the tornadoes come, we might lose some leaves. We might even lose some branches. But we are not uprooted because our roots go down to the water. Jesus Christ is our water. He quenches all thirst. And so as we are going about our daily tasks, and our daily um, uh, uh, duties and responsibilities, keep the word of God on your mind. And when things go wrong, and they will, Remember, start bragging on God. It'll bless you. It'll uplift you. I thank you all tonight for tuning in. I praise God for each of you, and I thank you for allowing me to come into your various destinations. And uh, I give God glory that I can just share uh, just some simple scripture, just some simple thoughts with some of his people. And I trust you will be able to give this same word to someone else. May God bless you. May God keep you until Sunday. I look forward to seeing you all on Sunday as the man of God will break unto us the bread of life. Have a great night. I pray that you sleep and rest well. And remember, even before you go to bed, start bragging on God.